In this video, we're going to take a quick look at a paper in 1978 published by Coslin and colleagues, which focuses on scanning of imagined images. Now you can see the kind of stimuli that was presented here in this map. So participants were given a map of a fictional island and they had seven landmarks. So each of these landmarks um, had names like the, the beach, the tree, the lake and the, the hut and so on. And what happened in the experiment was firstly the participants went through a pretty extensive um, learning process. So the key thing about this study is that they were they were asked questions about the map but obviously not whilst looking at the map. It was based purely upon their mental representation, what they had learnt about the map and after it had been um, taken away. Now, um, what they were asked was to imagine, um, they actually said, a, a black dot moving from one point to another. And so we have seven locations here and that gives us 21 um, possible pairs. So this is what was done. Now on each trial, the first object was named and the person was given, I believe, about five seconds to um, conjure up the, the map in their mind. The second object was then announced, at which point the participant had to imagine this small black dot, it's kind of like an imaginary person, um, going from the first object to the second object. And when the black dot had arrived at the second object, they had to push a button. And what the experimenters measured was the reaction time. How long did it take the participants to imagine um, or mentally simulate this black dot going from one location to another? If we look at the results here in this graph, what we can see on the x-axis was the distance between the points. And so we have a number of different distances because we've got um, 21 different pairs of locations. And so um, I haven't actually checked, but this ideally should be, there should be 21 dots or at least 21 um, distances. Now for each of those pairs, we have a reaction time. And what we can also see is that they put her, they have put a line of best fit through these dots. And we can see pretty convincingly that this is a straight line. They report the R value being 0.97. So I would say, you know, in psychology, this is um, pretty good evidence here that there is this linear relationship between the distance of the points um, that the imaginary kind of person, the black dot, had to travel and the how long it took the participants to respond. Now, um, who cares? What does this mean? This was taken as evidence that the imagined map, the internal representation that the participants had built up about the map was in fact spatial rather than symbolic. And we can, we can kind of figure this out um, kind of easily, I guess, because we can say, with the amount of time it takes the person to mentally simulate the black dot going from one point to another is proportional to the distance of the two points. Um, so, um, and here the map, the map is two dimensional. And so we can say, well, perhaps the person represents the map in this two dimensional space, which is kind of making it like an image. I don't, 
see how you could get more image-like than a two-dimensional representation. Um, and so it kind of makes sense if the person's representation is pictorial, um, image-like, then you would have this linear relationship between um, the amount of time it takes to kind of mentally simulate this black dot going um, different distances. So that was a really quick overview of um, a paper published by Coslin and colleagues in 1978. This is, uh, I've just presented the results of experiment two, and I believe there are four experiments, but this really covers the core of what we would like to extract from this paper.